Hey, friendo, Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. Available wherever podcasts can be found. And of course, tape live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. If you like the show ad free, you can get it two different ways. Number one, go to the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Steve and Larson for $5 a month. You get the show ad free plus both bonus episodes we do every single week. It's like eight bonus episodes a month, depending on what month it is. Sometimes it's probably maybe even 10 because sometimes there's like five weeks in a month. Yeah, depends on how it all works out. Yeah, anyways. Uh, so that's great. And then, of course, if you, just, if you don't care about the bonus content, you're like, I just want the show. I don't want to pay $5. You can pay $3. Three dollars, you get the entire show ad free, uh, and that is at goingandraw.supercast.tech. You can get that there, so uh, check it out. It's a great way to support Going and Raw, also, uh, either on the Patreon or doing it the other way through the Supercast thing. Uh, so yeah, thanks everybody for supporting us that way. Thank you so uh, much. We, we're gonna review Rampage and uh, before that, SmackDown, but before that. We got a little bit of talk about uh, some... Uh, oh, hey, actually, first, before we get into that, tomorrow, uh, live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson, we're we'll be watching Triple A, trip, Triple A, trip, Triple A, how do you say it? Ah. Triple A, ah. Triple A, Triple A, ah. Triple A's. Uh, triple Mania Reyes. So that should be a lot of fun. We're going to do yeah. that. And then on Sunday, of course, we're going to watch war games. So yes. just a couple of fun watch alongs. Uh, Fight TV has a, a, a triple mania for 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah. Or if you just want to hang out with us and watch us react to crazy shit. Yeah, uh, it is honestly like triple A, triple A's triple mania franchise at this point, including both triple mania and triple mania backlash. Uh, it's it's so much fun. It's really the two wrestling shows we look forward to probably more so than any other show through the course of the year. Yeah, I don't think it's even close, really. Uh, it starts at 4.30 Pacific, mm -hmm. 7.30 Eastern. So uh, come hang out with us. should be a good time. Yes, um, yes please. So anyways, yes, please. Before we get to the reviews of tonight's shows, uh, you, you dug up a little bit of info about uh, what, what some people in Dabity are making. What's well, this I did, I didn't dig up any info. I went over the Wrestling Observer's website, and they had the story. Oh. I clicked a few buttons and I got came across the story. So nice, nice. Dave Meltzer has the scoop on who the top money makers are in WWE, and it's no surprise the two names that top the list. Take a guess, Steve. Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Yeah, you, you're reading my notes, obviously. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns is correct. I probably uh, would have guessed that, anyways. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, apparently, both have five billion dollar guarantees. That's just the guarantees. Uh, according to Melser, there's also other talent or another talent that makes four million. And this is a quote: "quote A lot of the top talent is now at two million, some at three million. Hmm. Like Seth, maybe. Is it Seth? Orton, Orton, Orton. Yeah, yeah. Becky, Becky, maybe. Yeah, Drew, about Drew. Drew's maybe. gotta be yeah. at two, I think. Yeah, Lashley. Maybe. Yeah, Lashley two." Sure. Yeah. AJ? Two. <laughs> Maybe one and a half. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Look, man, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I, I know they're getting a couple. They they're get they have like several billion dollar deals. Yeah. You'd think that they get paid a bit more than like the mid-level NBA exception. I know. And I know <laughs> Melser said in, in the past, I think he just did this recently. You look at other major sports enterprises, sports leagues and players get about 50% of the income, give or take, you know? Yeah. yeah. And then WB is like 10%, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Pay your wrestlers more. I mean, $5 million is 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 a really good chunk of money. That being said, in relation to the the the, the, the revenue the company is bringing in, pay your wrestlers more. And this is an exclusive of WWE, by the way. UFC is also notorious for yes. underpaying their their athletes, but quite a bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, just sort of interesting. I think at his peak, Austin made like twelve million a year. That sounds right. But that's a much different day. Um, yeah. I mean, it was twenty years ago. But so I don't know what the inflation would be. Probably like around twenty million. Who knows? Something like that. And but, also, you uh, know, like merch. I'm sure he made a ton of oh, merch. Oh, uh, that yeah. That, I wonder how much of that was merch because I'd my god, a lot, a lot was merch. Yeah. 
Yeah, totally. I think I think a lot would probably be mer- merch and then probably like pay per view bonuses. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, that's all interesting stuff. Anyway. Yes. Uh, speaking of Brock Lesnar, speaking yeah. of Roman Reigns, they were yeah. featured, not surprisingly, uh, on this week's edition of WB SmackDown. Uh, the highlight of the show by far for me was Brock Lesnar showing his comedic chops. He and Sami Zayn had terrific chemistry. This opening segment with the two of them was an absolute delight, an absolute delight. And yet it was terrifying. <laughs> it was you would ter- have thought someone that was acting so nice could be so scary. Oh my gosh. Brock Lesnar is even more terrifying when he's out there, he doesn't have Paul Heyman talking for him. I mean, let's be honest, man. As great as Paul Heyman is, half the time during Brock's extended period doing Brock Lesnar stuff, it, it, it got a little, you know, it, it, it could easily translate as Brock phoning it in because all he had to do was stand up and go out there with the belt and kind of react to, to Paul Heyman. Yeah, he put on some really good matches, usually with yeah. the smaller opponents. His matches yeah. were fantastic. Yeah, they could be really um, fun. But I had always appreciated, for example, his uh, feud with Eddie Guerrero back in the day. You know, back when Brock would talk, Brock was equal parts charming and terrifying. And that's what we have today. That's what we had tonight. And yeah, the chemistry in him and Sammy was Was awesome. It was really good. It was was really good. And and let's not forget some of the, the awesome promos that Brock dropped while in UFC. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of his post match interviews were really good. The whole Bud Light Miller Light thing was yeah, awesome. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He was terrific. No, I thought that was that was tons of fun. Let's. I want to ask you this, man. Sure. So it was revealed tonight that uh, Brock versus Roman is happening at day one mm-hmm. uh, because uh, Brock bullied Sammy into taking the Roman match tonight. Sammy got demolished by Brock, and then Roman came out easy pickings. Mm-hmm. It was also revealed that Kofi's back and they're taking on the Usos. Mm -hmm. I know you and I have both thought that uh, uh, for the longest time, Roman's not going to drop that belt to anybody. Is there going to be? We had also heard a long time ago that Roman's heel run wasn't going to be that extended. And his his run as universal champion wasn't going to be that extended. It's supposed to be short, yeah. Are we going to get the twist in the story coming up at day one that sees Roman lose his title, the Usos drop their titles, and maybe Heyman switches back over to Brock and we get them trying to do a Roman face thing? Are they going to yeah. try to do a double turn at day one? It's entirely possible. I mean, there is, there's been uh, rumors that we could be getting Brock and Roman again at Mania. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, you know, assuming Brock's not available, they decide, or if he is, they decide. WWE decides they want to do it at, at, at 39. Um, then I guess you'd have to think, well, what's the story development at day one? It can't just be Roman beating Brock again because that doesn't advance the story. Not that WWE is, 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 it hasn't done that in the past, you know? Yeah. It's continuing feud while not exactly advancing the story. Um, but you'd think with, with Heyman having to say in creative in all this, he would be aware that if this feud is going to continue, they need to advance the story. And to advance the story, you got to have some major development happen at day one, whether it's a double turn, whether it's Brock winning the title, something has to happen. Otherwise, it's just spinning wheels. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Um, I want, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I I mean, they could have, they could do a double turn. They could do any number of things, but I'm I'm sort of they they do seem to be. Uh, day one seems to be looking like a little bit more than a B-level pay-per-view. At least they're trying to make it more than that. Yeah. It feels like they're trying to put a little bit of muscle behind it. I mean, we're still, mm-hmm. I mean, we're a little bit less, less than a month, month yeah. away. Yeah. But they started the setup for it last week with Sammy winning the thing, and they started talking about it a lot. Um, mm-hmm. So, obviously, that's going to heat up. I mean, if you look comparatively speaking, the last big four pay-per-view was Survivor Series, and they literally started they 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 finalized their the survivor series participants like a week the before homes. on the go homes yeah. i think yeah pretty much so pretty much. um so there's some some context for you but uh i mean the thing about it is anything anything can happen here yeah um, how about this steve let me, mm-hmm. let me, let me put this yeah. past you so uh what if at day 1 
the twist in the story is not Brock turning heel, aligning with Heyman, winning the title, anything like that. It's that Sammy helps Roman win. Ooh. Stick it to Brock. And we get Brock and Sammy at WrestleMania. Oh, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. You know what I would love even better? You know, it'd be great. What if Sammy helps Brock for whatever reason? Maybe he's like, oh, man, I'm traumatized. Uh, but he finds some way in his because he's crazy anyway. Well, yeah, he's like, hey, we're friends. We're buddies. I mean, I think he was saying that to himself to convince himself more than anything. But yeah, nonetheless, sure. he wants to be in Brock's good grace. Maybe he realizes that he got what was coming because he offended Brock. And he's like, let me make this right to Brock. They form a tag team. White Brownie yeah. says it here in chat. Sammy and Brock for two-man power trip. Somebody said in our Patreon Q&A thread we'll get to in a bit. Sammy and Brock form a tag team, and they go Solid after the stuff. tag team titles. That would be great. Well, then Sammy would have to win the Intercontinental title as well. Yes. Yeah, two-man power trip. Yeah, and the tag titles. Yeah, that would be mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. They're not doing anything with the Intercontinental Championship, as we no. saw tonight. Uh, no. Otherwise, I just Kind of a light episode of uh, SmackDown in yeah, terms of story you know, developments. I thought it was an all right show until Happy Talk. Oh, it's always an all right show until Happy Talk. Happy Talk just kills it. And then it has to figure out how to pick it back up. Yeah, and sometimes they can. More often than not, they can't. They just kind of have to struggle until they get to their main event and hope the main, main event delivers. And while the main event, supposed to be Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns, didn't happen in terms of them actually having a full-on match Mm -hmm. you know the the swerve they did kind of saw coming a little bit especially once brock got in the ring at the end Uh, and because you know brock it's not that he just wants the universal title he wants to beat roman reigns to win he wants to be roman for it yeah yeah totally yeah let's take a quick break here to get words from our sponsor paint your life steve Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you know this about me, but the holidays tend to make me quite sentimental, oh, which is yeah. another reason I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I got this fantastic. Let me take it off the wall. So you're taking it off the wall? You're going to take it off the wall? Looks great. Take it off the wall. Okay. I got this fantastic portrait of you, uh-huh. me, and Sid. Oh, yeah. From Paint Your Life, it really brings back some great memories. Makes me think of those times we had in the office. We had so much fun. Yeah. Great times, good memories. Great yeah, no, memories. look, I, I agree. That's a terrific painting. It's a yes, terrific it painting. It looks amazing. And I'll be honest with you, I kind of miss the office too. But the one thing that we have to disagree on is, factually speaking, Sid was never in our office. He never showed up. We waited for him. There was a phantom pizza one time, but never a Sid. Are you sure about that? Positive. Absolutely positive. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess we'll, we can just remember things differently. But one thing we can agree on is that Paint Your Life makes it easy to get custom-made, hand-painted art on your walls. You just send them a picture, and one of the world-class artists will hand-paint you a portrait at an affordable price. I mean, look at this. Mm. This incredible piece of art. Oof. I got to remember some of the greatest times in the history of going in raw. It only took about three weeks. So if you're looking for the perfect holiday gift for someone you love or yourself, then check out paint your life this yeah. is fantastic it's it's amazing it's absolutely beautiful at paintyourlife.com there's no risk if you don't love the final painting your money is refunded guaranteed and right now as a limited time offer get 20 percent off your painting that's right 20 percent off and free shipping to get this special offer text the word raw to 64,000. that's raw to 64,000. text raw to 64,000. paint your life celebrate the moments that matter most before we get back to the show, let's get a word in from our sponsor, Manscaped. So, Larson. Yeah. It's the holiday season, so it's mm-hmm. time to start thinking about what gifts you're going to give from Santa Claus's sack. And if you want to guarantee that the people in your life take care of their sack, then give them the gift of Manscaped, the leader in men's below-the-waist grooming. Their top-selling performance package 4.0 has what a guy needs to keep their package in tip-top shape. It includes Manscaped's Lawnmower Body Trimmer, the best trimmer for balls, butt, or body, as well as the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. Great products. Great products. But let's not forget about the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toter to keep your undercarriage fresh and clean. And if you order a performance package right now, you'll get two free gifts, a pair of Manscaped boxers, which are incredibly comfortable. 
uh, and the Shed Travel Bag. Or if you're looking for stocking stuffers, Manscaped has you covered with shampoo, body wash, cologne, even ball wipes to help keep your front area from getting too stinky. Whether you're shopping for your partner, dad, brother, or friendo, get them a gift they'll actually use. Yes, but make sure you hurry and get these gifts so they show up in time for the holidays. Right now, you can get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com with code RAW. Again, get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code RAW. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. Um, so, yeah, anyways, I'm going to just get into it here. It started sure. off with Brock opening the show. Gets on the mic, which is always a delight. He says, so you've you've caught on that my suspension's been lifted. He doesn't, He the, the, the gimmick, is he doesn't watch WWE. Because he's acting like, oh, so you realize that I will... They told us last week that it was a big deal. So he says, you've caught on that my suspension's been lifted. I'm here tonight for one reason, the Universal Championship. You may ask yourself, and then Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn, his music hits, he interrupts. He says, this is so great. At long last, our paths are crossing. It's been a long time coming. You know, our careers have been parallels, minus the UFC titles and Mania main events. We're two Canadian alpha males doing their thing. No disrespect I'm here to tell you I'm a fan. And he loves the look that Brock's got going loves, on. I love your look. I love this yeah, look. Yeah. Uh, Brock tells him to shut up. He says, I'm confused. I don't have the slightest idea who you are. Are you a fan? <laughs> <laughs> he says, I'm, I'm a lot of things. I, I'm, I'm a master strategist. Uh, uh, Brock says, Brock shut up. Shut up again. <laughs> says, uh, you have a lot of balls coming out here. I'm from Sh- Saskatchewan. So I'm from Canada. I'm from Saskatchewan. You know what I do in Saskatchewan? I hunt things. Ooh. I kill things in Saskatchewan. Yeah. I eat those things. And uh, he, t- he tells Sammy, uh, you better tell me who you are before I rip your head off. You know, at one point during this, early on when Sammy was walking to the ring, they cut to black, which yeah. usually happens when there's something in the, you know, something on screen that they need to censor out. Like if a wardrobe malfunction happens is typically when it happens. I wonder what, like, was there a, a sign, somebody holding an AEW sign or something up there? Oh, know. maybe. Anyways, uh, Sammy says, uh, that's a valid question. You see, I, I let me introduce myself. I'm the elder statesman of SmackDown, locker room leader, but most importantly, the number one contender for the Universal Championship. You see, I won a 20-man battle royal, and Brock starts laughing. He says, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> let me get this straight. I get suspended, and you become number one contender, and they both start laughing, and Brock literally slaps his knee. and says, I don't know if it's a knee slapper, but yeah. I'm the yeah. number one contender. And once I beat Roman at day one, and after I beat him, I'll roll out the red carpet for you, Brock. Brock Lesnar versus Sami Zayn. I'm happy to yeah. do that for you. Yeah, and then Brock says, oh, it's all coming together now. They're playing you, Sammy. And Sammy's like, how? And Brock uh, asks Sammy, why, why would you wait till day one to fight Roman? Why not do it tonight? He says, I could see it tonight. And he's like, He's looking up at the sky, you know, like the in, in the musicals where yeah. they're looking at the marquee. <laughs> and he's like, look at it, kid. And he has his hand. He's, he's like, he's got his hand over his shoulder, too. Yeah, over Sammy's shoulder. And he's yeah. actually like, look at it, kid. He's the says, whole marquee look thing. Yeah, kid, look too. at it, kid. Yeah. Sammy versus Roman Reigns for the universal title. Yeah. Uh, Sammy says, you know, uh, I, I really don't want to do that in Texas. And Brock's like, no, come on, man. I'm, I'm a fan now. And he starts backing him down. And Sammy sort of wiggles out of it. And he's just making excuses and. Brock just finally says, Sammy, you should fight him tonight here. Uh, Sammy says, you know, I'm just going to say no. And he sort of touches him and Brock grabs his hand and twists it. Sammy finally agrees to it. And Brock says, you know what? I'm going to be here ringside tonight. I'll g- I got your back. Yeah. And that it was great segment. Yeah, it was great. We go backstage. Sammy's talking to Sonia Deville and he's like, I really put my foot in my mouth. I might have agreed to face Roman tonight, but I don't really want to do it. Then he senses Brock. He walks up behind him. Yeah. Uh. And he says, Brock, I'm sorry. I really want to do it, but Adam Pierce isn't here. I can't make the match. Maybe it won't happen. So he just says, Oh, I can make the match. Match is it's official. Match is done. It's a good idea. And then Brock just says, Oh, I get the winner at day one, too. And Sonya says, Yeah. And then Brock says, to, says to Sammy, Hey, we're both winners. High five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was really good stuff. This was really good stuff. Uh, after that, we had Sasha Banks versus Shayna Baszler. It's a fun match. Yeah, this is a fun match. There was a couple bits here where, uh, Shayna, I mean, it's it, it was obviously just good selling, but man, there that was that, in the corner that was stiff. You know, they replayed that a couple times, and like it sort of hit Sasha in the chest a bit, and she like recoiled. But man, 
the sell on that, the actual knee, the execution, it was ugly. It was awesome. It looked great. Yeah. Yeah. She got two with a gut wrench after that. Shane is able to get the the Kirifuna clutch in. Sasha rolls back, transitions that into a bank statement. Shane gets out of that, hits a V trigger. Sasha gets the win with like a roll up pin type thing. Yeah, it was really good. It, it was, was really a good, good match. Yeah. Uh, after that, we're backstage again. Sonya's talking to Adam Pierce on the phone. She's filling him in on what's going on, and Adam Pierce is all, you know, I've had travel issues, mm-hmm. travel issues. Oh yeah. I'm running behind. You seem to have things going good. I don't want to mess with that. I'm just going to stay away. And Sonya's like, no, Brock. He seems like he's in a good mood. Mm-hmm. And Pierce again says, mm, Nah, you got, you got it. You got it under control. I'm just, I'm going to go. I'm going to go remember the Almo, he says. <laughs> go visit the Almo. She's and, like, what the hell? And she's like, well, you know, WB management is not going to be happy if you show up for work. And he says, well, WB management is going to be happy if I show up and mess up the whole show. So I'm out. So Drew enters, and he wants to know why he was in the Battle Royal last week. And Sonia says, Pierce made that the list of the participants, and but he won't be here tonight. So Drew, he has his giant sword, holds it up, and tells Sonia, let Adam Pierce know I'm looking for him. Yeah, ugh. Sort of. Oh, gosh, uh, next happy talk. So, God, so bad. After that, we had happy talk. Uh, Lacey walked in. She was like, "Hey, do you mind if I, I, because she, her, she has a bunch of stuff set up in the bedroom, like to do her jewelry stuff, because you don't have like a proper office space yet." And she's like, "Do you mind if I do?" Usually, I'd be like, "Well, hold on, let me, let me run to my, you know, to the office so I can just listen to what's going on because it's a talking bit." I didn't do that this time. So all this was for me was just a bunch of hammering. I caught that they were talking shit about Jeff Hardy, and then they were talking shit about Drew McIntyre. Drew comes out with a sword. He points it at Baron, who uh, uh, Jeff Hardy, because Madcap had come out. Jeff Hardy hits a twist of fate on him. He sort of comes out of nowhere. Madcap gets one, too. Drew hits a Claymore, and they put on their hats, and uh, Jeff does the, uh, what's that dance called, The, the thing? Oh, the floss, floss, the floss. Flossed. Yeah, he flossed. He flossed. Yeah, but yeah. No, you got the you got the important bits. It's terrible. It's I can't. This, I it just kills it dead for me. This is the first time I remember wearing, uh, seeing Baron wear shorts. Yeah, he's got a lot of leg tattoos, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. not a fan. Mm-hmm. Not uh, a great segment. Yeah. Uh, after that, we had another Zia Lee kind of like motion comic animated uh, video package. These are really well done. These are so well done. These are really good. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, they're obviously investing a lot of time and, and money into these vignettes. And hopefully yeah. uh, they do the same once she debuts and give, give her a push. And she's just not like on main event in three months. Yeah, that would be nice. That'd be cool. I hope I hope you're right about that. You know, she's a really fantastic wrestler. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's hope for good things. Uh, after that, we had the Umberto's Garza, a.k.a. the Los Lotharios. Versus the Viking Raiders. This was so bunk because, like, fucking Boogs and Nakamura. Number one, it's bunk that Nakamura is the Intercontinental Champion and they have him doing nothing. But, like, the entire point of this, the uh, the Boogs was starting to jam on the guitar. He gets up on the commentary table, starts jamming yeah, on his yeah. guitar to try to distract Los Lotharios. Mm-hmm. And that's a protected win for the Viking Raiders. Instead, it just ends up not really helping the Viking Raiders no. at all. They end up getting uh, the, the roll-up loss yeah. to the Umberto's Garza. And then it's like doubly nonsensical because then the Viking Raiders roll out of the ring. It's like, what was the deal with that? And then Boog starts playing their new theme and they all just, everybody just starts pounding their chest. That's, the, that's the, the Viking Raiders' new thing is they pound their chest and say raid now. So it's I'll like be that scene from Wolf you. of Wall Street with uh, Matthew McConaughey mm-hmm. where he's doing this. Mm-hmm. But they say raid instead. I'll be honest with you. The absurdity of what happened after the match kind of made me chuckle. But it's like in the grand scheme of things, I really don't want to chuckle. I want to see the Viking Raiders wreck things. Here's the thing. Yeah. It, like I, I like I like laughing. You yeah. might not and that might not seem obvious if you pay attention to what like me on a regular basis, but I enjoy a humor and I enjoy laughing. Yeah, sure. But I also enjoy story development. No, oh, that's it better. I want story development yeah. on my wrestling programs. If yeah, you can right. give me some some laughs and story development at the same time, great. great. Yeah. But if it's cheap laughs that that run contrary to what story should be telling, uh, the the story you should be telling, then I'd be like, all right, th- you're not. You're, this is nothing. It's mm-hmm. nothing. This is a, a cheap laugh that I'm gonna forget about in five minutes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, 
Yeah, no, I know. No, you're right. It's a cheap laugh, but I'll take what I can get. <laughs> I'm not going to get story development. That's for damn sure. Yeah, it was a bummer, man. I was like, oh, okay. You know, I, I know they're trying to book, you know, the Los Lotharios is pretty strong. I know it's a redundancy. It's the the Lotharios is what I'm saying when I say the Los Lotharios. But, um, but yeah, that's why I call them Umberto's Garza because it's both of their names. Uh, but, yeah, it was just, come on. You can give these guys a fucking win, you know, and it could be tainted, too. It's fine if it's tainted. You know, Viking Raiders shouldn't be eating these losses, man. No. Imagine they got the win there, and then they go and rock out with Nakamura and Boots. It makes more sense. It does make more sense. Yeah. And you're advancing the story. You ha- can have your cake and eat it too. You can have the the the, the lulls and you can advance your story. There is something about uh, <clears throat> what was it, Lita, Trish, Lita, and the Bellas. I think were on some Zoom call and some show or something, and they were talking about them and Trish Stratus having a match against four four horsewomen. Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. It's great. They Be should awesome. they should do it. They but do you think I don't know if WWE would ever do that? It's like they they have this thing so. about you have all this cool stuff that you could do. You could have your cake, and you could, in fact, eat it as well, which is the best part of having cake, by the way. Is eating it. Is eating it. But maybe Vince doesn't like cake. It's an old, like, Victorian phrase, isn't it? The having the cake and eat it too thing. Probably, yeah. Yeah, sounds like it. Or that was uh, let them eat cake. No, that was uh, that was Marie Antoinette. Oh, okay. With let them eat cake. Ah, okay. When I say Victorian, uh, I just mean anything in the UK prior, like, 1960s. Gotcha. Anyways. Gotcha. Uh, after that, we had Tony Storm. Speaking interview. of the UK, no, she's from. Never mind. She's from Australia, right? Yeah. Australia. But she spent a lot of time in the UK. Yes, that's true. Uh, so uh, she's asked about the pie incident last week, and she's like, "Yeah, I know everybody's around calling me names." She says Charlotte could try to embarrass me as much as she wants, but that's not going to stop me from going after what I want. Title match says I'm not impressed by Charlotte's accolades. Charlotte tried to embarrass me because I had already embarrassed her when I told her that she was going to lose to Becky at Survivor Series and that happened. Um, she continues Charlotte might not think I'm on her level but I'm going to prove her wrong. You know she says I might be known as 2 Pie Tony now but soon I'll be known as Smackdown Women's Champion. Yeah. Yeah. So that plays out a little bit later after that we had an Usos promo in advance of Jay's match with King Woods. Uh, they start talking some shit to Sammy about uh, challenging Roman. And uh, uh, he says, you know, it's worse to have Brock intimidate you. They talk about Roman being great. Woods comes out, says, I know you like surprises. I may not have my crown back yet. I guess he's going to get a new one. He says, but here's the hand of the king. And Kofi Kingston's back from injury. That's great. So that's, that's great. awesome. What wasn't awesome was the, how this match ended up. So we had King Woods versus uh, uh, Jey Uso. But, like, within, I don't know, a couple minutes. Yeah, it's uh, pretty quick. It, we got a DQ thanks to Jimmy Uso. Yeah, yeah. And then we cut uh, – oh, sorry. And then after that, uh, Kofi takes out Jimmy with the clothesline off the ring steps, hits Jay with a trouble in paradise. Uh, New Day stand tall in the ring. We cut backstage. Roman's watching. Mm-hmm. And he was like, uh, Kofi is back. Adam Pierce isn't here. He's saying this to Heyman. There's a lot of things that I don't know about tonight. And he turns to Paul and says, did you know Brock was going to be here tonight? And he's like, I'm about as, I'm as surprised. I was as surprised as you were last week. Mm-hmm. And he's asked, uh, he asked his Heyman, hey, did you know uh, that Brock was going to be in Sammy's corner? And and Roman says, sorry, Paul says, yep, surprised to me too. And he says to the Heyman, I want you to tell me something that you should know. I'm going to smash Sammy Zane. Smash. Brock, comes, Brock comes near me tonight. I'm gonna smash him too. Smash him too. He just dreams about smashing all day. So apparently, an early an early recording of the phrase uh, "I can't have your cake and eat it too" is found in a letter in Mar- from March of fifteen thirty eight. My from goodness, Thomas Duke of Norfolk to Thomas Cromwell, as a man cannot have his cake and eat his cake. <laughs> That's interesting stuff. Interesting. Thomas Interesting. Cromwell after that, was an English lawyer. Uh, after that, we had the new day backstage with Leah. She's saying, "Hey, band's back together. I'm happy for you both." Mm-hmm. That's Kofi's back. Um, and the Woods calls over Kayla. Uh, he hands the interview off to Kofi, and Kofi says, "The bloodline tried to end his career. Uh, he was out with an MCL sprain, so he had to sit and watch as they destroyed King Woods' crown." But he said, "Like, 
the Usos smash the crown. They're going to destroy the Usos' title reign and challenge them at day one. There you go. Uh, after that, we had a Charlotte promo. Uh, she says she was the talk of the town because she smashed two pies in her face. Everybody was leaving about it, was, was laughing about it. Everybody at home was laughing about it, et cetera, et cetera. She basically says Tony's never going to be champion. She leaves. Tony comes down with a pie, and then she pies Charlotte. Yeah. It looked like a creamier pie. It did. Sort of like a cream pie to, to Charlotte. It's like not shaving cream? Creamier, yeah. No, no, no. Maybe it was shaving cream. Could be some sort of cream pie, though. Uh, after after that, that, we had uh, Sheamus and Cesaro. This is about as hard-hitting as you would expect from these two. Yeah. Uh, finished this. Saw Sheamus with the advantage. He starts talking a hell of crap to Cesaro. He says, Ridge is ten times the man that you are. And Cesaro says to Sheamus, you're like a brother to me. He tries to hit the 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 gotch uh, neutralizer. Instead, Sheamus escapes that. He has a bro kick for the win. <laughs> Cesaro signs that new contract to give a universal title shot. And now he's jobbing out to everybody. I did appreciate the little shit talk here between the two of them. Yeah, you know, that was good. That was Sheamus good. saying Ridge. <laughs> Sheamus is now a bigger fan of Ridge than Ridge is of Sheamus. Seemingly, because he was like, "Oh, you're half the man Ridge is," and and Cesaro was like, "You're like a brother to me, Anakin." And then he got his head taken off. It was great. I've got the eye of ground, Seamus. <laughs> Anyways, after that, Naomi comes up to Sonia. She's like, you know, I couldn't even enjoy my victory last week because all I was thinking about was you trying to kill my glow. So give me a match with you one-on-one. She says, sure. When I decide not to wear this suit, if I have my ring gear on, that's fine. Do what you want. But as long as I have this suit on, I'm your boss. I'm WWE official. So if you lay one hand on me, I'll make sure you, you, you get fired. And yeah. uh, Naomi says, well, do you accept my match? And Sonya slaps her and says, yep. And then they announce the match is happening next week on SmackDown. Yeah. I wonder, God, that that that, that should be a day one match. Like Sonya? It but I, do you think they're going to gimmick their way out of it? Probably. Probably, right? That's what I'm expecting, yeah. Should be a pay-per-view match. Sonya coming out of, uh, coming back to the ring? I know it totally that's should. That's be. a big a thousand deal. Percent. Yeah. A thousand percent. Uh, then we had our main event. So uh, Sammy comes out first. He drops a promo. He says, "Tonight might be the biggest match of my career. But there's something I need to get off my chest. Something I need to say. Texas is my least favorite state in this country. I never, I never dreamed of winning my first Universal title here. But hey, tonight he's going to do something that no one has done in a long, long time. Shock the world. He's going to upset Roman Reigns and walk out of San Antonio, the new Universal champion." And when he does, he doesn't have he won't have any of you fans to thank he won't have to thank any of you fans. Mm-hmm. Said that you've never supported me, never helped me fight against this conspiracy. The only person he has to thank is Brock. This brings out Brock Lesnar. He comes to the ring. Sammy tells the crowd to make some noise for him. He says, Brock, you're an honorable man. You said you're gonna be here, you're here. He says, I know you're not here to help me win. I'm not saying you shouldn't help me win. Um, I'm just saying, Brock, you probably have an easier time against me at day one than he would against Roman. I mean, your recent track record against Roman hasn't been that great. Ooh. No disrespect. I'm just trying to say, and then R- Brock suplexes like three or four times, two yeah. F5s. Stand Sammy up at the corner and walks out. Yeah. Yeah. So then we have our match. Roman Reigns versus Sammy Zayn. It's like two commercial breaks, and yeah. uh, Sammy's still just dead in the corner. They ring the bell. Roman goes, ooh, ah, spear. And then uh, he doesn't even bother to pin him. He puts him in a guillotine. Yep. And Sammy immediately taps out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's your SmackDown. That was SmackDown, of yeah. course. Right after SmackDown is Rampage. Rampage. Uh, Let me change the thing. It was. It was a fine enough show. Um. Yeah. It was. It was fine. I mean, it's you know, it's it's Rampage, so they don't do shit on it. Well, that's not entirely. Yeah, that. Th- yeah, they didn't do a whole lot. There was a title match, the the Tony Nese versus Sammy Guevara. That kicked which was things good. off, which was good. And the 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 main event was really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a story beat there at the end. Malachi with the miss to 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 Pax to face. Pac. Now pac has been misted in both eyes. Mm-hmm. We had some go home math for uh, tomorrow's uh, Triple Mania Rahius. Mm-hmm. Uh, gimmick. What's your What's your early prediction? I know we don't do like actual predictions, but four thousand channel points on Lucha Brothers. Oh, okay. They're gonna get them back. Yeah, that could be. Which for me is a pretty large bet. Yeah. How many How many channel points do you have these days? Sixty four thousand. I have like twenty thousand. I gotta be careful. 
I'm gonna be really careful. Hey, the, uh, uh, I was reading some Lucha blog today, uh-huh. and uh, is the clowns match gonna be on the card? Let me double check. Because from what I've heard, when, from what Lucha blog said, uh, uh, one of the participants said that Chess Man is gonna replace Murder Clown. I think Murder Clown. That match, it, no, that wouldn't be that one. That's because it'd be Pagano in it, right? Where's so it's which so match it's, is is Murder Clown in? It's well, Murder Clown is in a match against La Impresa, Puma okay. King, Sam Adonis, and DMT Azul. But Psycho Clown, Pagano, and Kane Velasquez are teaming up against L.A. Park and Ray Scorpion and Taurus. Okay, so I don't think it's that one. I think it's the first one you mentioned. Well, if Chess Man's got, if he's a match, he's got to be the tagging with Pagano or against him. Well, I That's think long-term they, storytelling right there. Yeah. Well, you never know. I don't know. Oh, I'm just telling you what Lucha Blog tweeted out, man. Is 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 the La Impresa match going to be on the fight TV Yeah, thing? it is. We, we will get Chess Man. All right. I just want to see Chess Man. But I want to see Chess Man either tagging with or against Pagano. <laughs> I'm telling you, we got to start watching weekly, man. Oh, man. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, it's you know, it's uh, it's rampage. Uh, last match was good. It was good. Yeah, but it was bookended by two pretty solid matches, and yeah. you know, some stuff in between. So they kicked off with Tony Nice challenging Sammy Guevara for the TNT title. Uh, Tony Nice, he's he scaled back uh, the ring, uh, the entrance gear. He just has like a sweat jacket. Young boy, like in a, yeah, and Knee-bon. then some red tights. What'd you say, Tony Nice? Bond? Nice, that's nice. good. Tony Nice Bond. Yeah, that's good. Um, and, and Sammy Guevara comes out. He's got the rib tape. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's got the DDP uh, rib tape. Yeah, and so Nice wisely, immediately, and consistently targets the ribs because that's mm-hmm. what you want to do. Mm-hmm. That's a target right there for you. Uh, plenty of high-flying stuff. Fun match. Uh, in the end, though, Tony Nice goes for a running Nice. Uh, instead, he runs to a boot from Sammy. Sammy hits GTH to get the win and retain that title. I mean, I'm still not entirely sure why Sammy is TNT champion and not Miro. When Miro had that title, the title I feel like the title meant something. I feel like Sammy's involved in all this other stuff far too often. It doesn't involve the title. The title kind of feels like a bit of an afterthought. I appreciate that you know they are continuing Miro's story that took a turn because he lost the title and now he's not having sex yes. with his wife. Um, I appreciate that, but it should have meant more. When he lost that title, it should have been a bigger deal. Absolutely. I, I, I agree 100%. Sammy wasn't the guy. No. Um, you love Christian. I know, but let me take this promo because I know you like Christian a lot. I, it's factually untrue. So uh, he had a promo, and he was like, hey, no secret. Uh, we're number one contenders, but the Lucha Brothers beat us uh, prior to winning the tag titles to earn the number one contender spot to face the Young Bucks and then got the belts. And he talks about momentum again, saying it's important, but at the same time, same time, he'd be gone just like that. So he was, all, he was all over the map with this promo. He was, and he was talking really fast. Mm-hmm. He says, we could go out there and scout tonight because anyone could be a potential opponent. And he says, if it's the last thing I do in this business, you two will be tag champions. So if they don't win the tag titles, he has to retire, and Steve will be very happy. Well, uh, you know, I, no, I wouldn't be. Um I think he can push that and say, well, you didn't win it this time, but we're going to keep on trying. And if, you know, eventually you don't win them, if one of you leaves the company and you never won them, then I'm going to retire. He says, if you don't win them, I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn on you both. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Guess what? Jungle Boy, you're getting a concerto. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, After that, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say somebody here in chat mentioned uh, uh, that uh, Tony Nese was. Was he announced as being officially all elite? I thought that had yeah, happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. Was that just recent? today, I believe, yeah. That's cool. Today That's yesterday. great for him. That's awesome. I know. He is the premier athlete, man. He is. He's a hell of an in-ring talent. Yeah, absolutely. He's good. And, I, yeah, I always liked him. And, uh, again, you know, I kind of felt he was just simply misused. Oh, there we go. Okay, three hours ago. Look at that. That's awesome. And I thought it was, I thought Tony Nese's promo on, on Dynamite wasn't bad. That's, that was always kind of the thing is, is terms of the, like, in-ring, he's awesome. Yeah. It was in terms of the character aspect of wrestling, you know, WWE especially, where there's such a huge focus on 
being a huge personality, mm -hmm. you know, could he thrive there? Um, AEW, I mean, it helps to have a character, obviously. Yeah. But you don't have to be, you know, huge over the top personality to get over in, in AEW. Put him in a big faction. Put him in a faction. He could be the Team X Taz. Factor. Put it, oh, Taz. man, that'd be great. Hey, hey what? Anyways, after that, we had a Jade Cargill versus uh, a Thunder Rosa student, Janai Kai, who uh, looked absolutely terrific. Like, her getup was really, uh, really The Kick else. Demon. The Kick Demon. What a great That's name. A great name. It's a great yeah, that name. was rad. She, was, she didn't have any uh, uh, boots on. She was bare feet. Mm -hmm. So she could just, like, kick your head off with her bare feet. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately for her, she went up against an opponent who is absolutely terrifying in Jade Cargill. Jade won very quickly with a glam slam and then uh, afterwards picked up Kai, hit some strikes, a pump kick right to the right to like the gut, too. It was horrible yeah. Yeah. Uh, in a good way. Uh, and then Thunder Rosa, who was on commentary, was like, mm -mm, not doing that anymore. So she goes down there, pushes Mark Sterling out of the way, hits the ring, ducks a pump kick, hits some ground and pound on Jade. The refs come in, break it up. It's a whole thing. I'm looking forward to that match. Yeah, that should be a good match. That should be a really good match. Uh, we got a super click promo. Uh, Adam Cole says, uh, Orange Cassidy, he's trying to explain why he was even on commentary maybe to begin with. So he says, I was on commentary on Dynamite, but you came out to steal my spotlight. You're the, he calls him the laughing stock of AEW. Wow. And uh, Nick says, uh, you think you're tough guys. We're tough guys. We're tough guys. You want to bring a chair into the equation? That's not going to end well. And the match just challenges. Uh, best friends to a match ends up is going to be Young Bucks versus Chuck and Rocky Romero. Oh, that's of course, cool. Of course, uh, uh, the Young Bucks, Rapongi Vice, which was Rocky and Trent. Mm -hmm. Series of awesome matches oh, while absolutely. in New Japan. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That junior awesome division matches. was crazy back then. Big old giant Trent in the junior division. Um, after that, we had an Eddie Kingston promo. Unfortunately, he was not at catering. He was just sitting on some steps. He was like, I don't care that 2.0 beat up Jericho. That's more of a task. Uh, yeah. He said, my concern is 2. Point. He's like, we got no business, me and Jericho. He yeah. said, my concern is 2.0. 2. 2.0 2. is going to learn real clear. You reap what you sow, partner. You beat up Eddie. Eddie's going to beat you up. Exactly. Uh, we get a real quick uh, Brian Danielson. John Silver video package. Heal Brian Danielson is awesome. Wouldn't awesome. that be great if Eddie said, you can't have your, your, your cake and eat it too, partner? Which would be funny because last week he was trying to eat his cake. Right, exactly. Or two weeks ago, whatever it was, he was trying to eat his cake. AEW hires. I know. Long-term storytelling. Details. <laughs> uh, then we get our customary Mark Henry interview before the main event with uh, Pac and Penta on one side of the screen, FTR on the other. He's asking Pac about his uh, what, how well he could see. And Pac says, do I look blind to you? I'm good to go. He says, I'm going to get Malachi for what he did to my eye. But tonight is about revenge for Ray Phoenix. And Cash is like, revenge? No, no, no. Tonight is, is revenge for ATR for depriving them of their win at full gear, becoming the first two-time AEW tag champs. And then Dax gives a uh, uh, Phoenix bunch of crap for not showing up. And they start bickering back and forth. Mark Henry uh, interrupts and says, that's enough talk time for the main event yeah he settles them down so he can get his shit in he's like whoa yeah. whoa whoa everybody okay stop 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 like he has another pressing question no no, no everybody stop talking stop, 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 stop. time for talking's done um i want to rewind just real quick here and put sure. an emphasis on that uh two things number one because somebody mentioned this in chat and i forgot to, to write it down here that uh that callus walked through during mm. the super click promo you know in the background yeah chummy with uh with nick uh so that was interesting and I really wanted this, this. The Danielson John Silver video package was really well done. So good. Danielson Gosh. is so great. So his general thesis is: you are what is it? It's a uh, 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 you you are as good, or you start to become come the five people you you uh, you know hang surround out with, yourself with. Surround yourself, which with, is yeah. an old adage. I, I've heard that before. And he says, "Look yeah, at yeah. John Silver." I believe he's the best of the Dark Order, but look at who he hangs out with. And he mentions Hangman. You know, he's like, do you think he's going to get better hanging out with these clowns? Mm -hmm. That's my argument. And I, yeah. I love just I the condescending way. That's my argument from my perspective. Yeah. It's yeah, so my, great. In my opinion. Yeah. His his so choice good. of verbiage is just absolutely it's outstanding. It's so good. It's, yeah, it's so good. 
Uh, then we have our main event, FTR versus PAC and Penta. Fun enough match. Uh, is, is, is chaotic as you would expect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but lots of fun. Tully gets knocked off the, the apron at one point. Um, and then uh, so uh, Pac takes out FTR with moonsaults to the floor. He puts Dax Harwood back in the ring. Um, so Dax, when he gets back in the ring, he's selling knee. And so the ref goes and checks on him. Uh, while that's happening, uh, Malachi runs out and, and, and miss Pac in the eyes, in the other eye. <laughs> Dax rolls him up to get the win. It was uh, deep. Penta, it was deep. Yeah, it was. Too. It was. Penta makes a, a pretty half-hearted attempt at attacking FTR. They pull his mask off and kind of trade the max mask back and forth, putting on their own heads. And then uh, Malachi gets the ring and gets about I don't know at least first knuckle deep on his thumbs yeah, yeah. and packs eyes. Yeah, and he pulls his hands up and there's you know like fake blood on it and stuff. Yeah, he looked very happy with himself. Yeah, yeah, he was he was very very tickled with what he just did. It's going to be a good one. They had a they had a match at uh, like the first UK thing yeah, they, did. they did when yeah. when when he was still Tommy End. That's right. Yeah, they they still build him as Tommy End back then too. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Anyways, uh let's go ahead and answer some questions. I've yeah. got a thread right here on the Patreon. If you can't make the show live and you want to ask us a question, you can do so on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Uh, John Mackey here says, if NXT were around during the Attitude Era, who would have prospered there from either WWF or WCW mid-card talent? So oh, who wow. would have been, who, who would you see in which company, you know, having having lived through that back then? Tommaso Ciampa would have been obviously an Attitude Era upper mid card guy. I guess it's kind of easy to say Billy Gunn, huh? <laughs> yes. Wardlow. Wardlow. Uh, Wardlow. Oh, this is a, the question is NXT. Sorry. It's NXT. Oh, sorry. NXT. NXT. Sorry. NXT. Uh, Wardlow's totally a WCW mid card guy. Yeah. Yeah. I can see uh, that. NXT. Uh, Oh, Carmelo and Trick. Oh yeah, for the for for WWF, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. I could totally see that. That's a good one. Yeah. Obviously, Braun Breaker would be WCW through. And through. Obviously, yeah. Obviously, That's good. obviously. Uh, there was a highlight message here from Joe Hansen that I wanted to read, and then my chat skipped, and now I can't read it. Uh, about uh, him losing a bunch of weight. Awesome, oh, that's awesome, awesome, awesome. That's great. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, Joe. I was trying to find it here from Joe Hansen. The Joe Hansen, yep. Uh, White Brownie says, if Charlotte were to start her own faction, who would be in it and what would be the name of it? If who was starting to get a start? Charlotte. Uh, oh, that'd be great. I wish they would do that. That'd be awesome. I know. You really like the Queen's Court doing. or something like that? Yeah, that'd be terrific. Um, who'd be in it? Who'd be in it? Who's a protege? Who's someone that she could take under her Aaliyah. Wing? Good. Good. I think Aaliyah would work. That'd be great. Good. Uh, Good. R.I. Wrestling fans, says I'm going to Beyond Wrestling's Fate Forever show on Sunday. Ruby Soho versus Alex Shelley as the main event. Oh, wow. He says, I can't wait. It's only my second indie show since the pandemic started. Third show overall. I love live wrestling. Absolutely, man. Go support your That's local awesome. live wrestling. Oh, and R.I. Wrestling fans sub, too. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Red Hand John says, who do you think would be a good fit to join my personal vacation spot now, Cody Island. Well, who's the next person to debut in AEW? That's probably the correct answer. Kevin Steen, baby. Kevin Steen. I'm going to attack Cody. Come revolution. Uh, David Matushek says, do you agree with certain WWE talent that NXT? So apparently, according to Brian Alvarez, mm-hmm. he was told by certain NXT talent that NXT isn't as fun as it used to be. What do you think about yeah. that? What do you think about that? Do you think it's as well, fun I mean, as it used to be? I mean, I'm, I, 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 I would imagine if 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 you you go to place and you go to place for a while and you enjoy going there because it it caters to your interests. Yeah, you think it's fun, and then they change everything about it, and it no longer caters to your interests. I can understand why you think it's no fun now. Yeah, man, change sucks sometimes, especially when they change it from NXT good to NXT train wreck. <laughs> Uh, pop yeah. punk Bob Ross says, "What's the long term plan for Roman? Who do you think will eventually take that title off him?" 
it could be Brock at day one. If it's not Brock at day one, doesn't it have to be like two years from now or something? Like a yeah. long time from it now? It has to be after he beats The Rock, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the the idea, though, if Brock beats him, it's going to be some wonky finish. It's not going to be a clean loss, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the first person to cleanly beat him one, two, three in the middle of the ring. It'd be a big I think deal. they still want to save that to be a huge deal. I agree. I Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know who that's going to be. Church uh, says, did anyone else notice that the al- eye that Malachi spit the mist in causing Pac to now wear an eye patch is the same one that Malachi had injured that eventually caused him to get possessed and turn into Malachi? There you go. Yes, it's the left eye. Left eye. No, right eye, sorry. It's right eye on both of them. Right eye, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rich said, uh, got a WWE ad. They're advertising Big E as champion versus Seth versus KO versus Lashley for Raw in March. He says, take it for what it's worth, but they advertised it. So they do this often uh, where they'll advertise who they think are their, you know, big names uh, for, you know, things that are three months out. That's not that's yeah. not new, but it can sometimes give you some indication as to where they're, they're they're potentially thinking mm-hmm. of of heading certain storylines. The fact that Lashley is listed in the main event is maybe kind of telling. Maybe they're going to rope back around to loop back around to Lashley as a main eventer at some point soon. Maybe Could that's be. in the cards. But I kind of feel they just sort of pull like the bigger names and and put them in random ass matches. Yeah, and then yeah. when they comes to it, it does completely different. Uh, Cody Miles with the sub also says, Hey guys, was that this dynamite rampage taping a note on the crowd noise? They turned us down a lot because mm-hmm. there were malfunctioning vent fans right above hard cam that were ridiculously loud right about the time punk came out. Huh? That sounds horrible. That does sound horrible. Um, let's see here. Sub John says for Brian Danielson to get ultimate heel heat. I feel he needs to beat John silver by TKO of some sort or make Adam page throw in the towel on his behalf. Mm, or Trent, mm. just get Trent Seven in the building. He'll throw in that towel exactly, immediately. Exactly. Um, yeah, I could see that. I could see Danielson. This is going to be. He's going to get a lot of heat for this silver match. Yeah, he's, he's got to step up the level of violence involved with it too. And and like. he has to be extra like shitty about it too. He's got to flex know? the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Jorge D. Similar to what happened to Sammy tonight. What could Brock be able to motivate you into doing that you really don't want to do? Uh, review Raw on Monday nights. Ooh, I'd be like, take my hand. I don't care. <laughs> Break it. My right one, left one. I don't care. I'm not doing it, Brock. Not F5 happening. me. F10 me. I don't care. Wow. Not doing it, man. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> uh, Luis Arez of the Wild Card asks, any update on Bailey's return and who would her first feud back be with? So she has posted some like cryptic things on social media uh, that seem to think that seem to lead you to believe maybe she's coming back relatively soon. It was May she got she was hurt. It wasn't May. OK, I think I don't know how long like she's supposed to be out like nine months or something like that. Six, six to nine months or six, okay. to eight months, something like that. Yeah. Well, it's been a while, like seven months. Uh, uh, hip hop hippo, remember what happened to Malachi's eye when you started wearing an eye patch? Is this the start of the House of Black? Ooh, there you go. Could be. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Uh, let's see. Eric Strickland says, "I wish Nakamura would just drop the IC title to Sheamus or Cesaro. That way, the title will get featured in singles matches and be relevant." I agree. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it would be awesome. It would be awesome. Uh, Joe Juarez, should there be concern for AEW after last Dynamite did fairly low ratings, especially with something else significant on TV, or was this just a weird one-off anomaly? Ratings have been going down ever since they moved uh, to live nationwide on Wednesday. And at the time, uh, it was said that that's going to that's gonna hurt the ratings mm-hmm. because they call it prime time for a reason. That's when people have the time to sit and watch television. So Yeah, uh, look, AEW, they'll be fine. Um, they're going to, they're going to have, you know, like anything else, they're going to have peaks and valleys Mm -hmm. when something big happens, the ratings will reflect it when they have a big signing, when, uh, there's a particularly buzzworthy feud, 
the ratings will increase and then it'll go back down while there's a lull period, et cetera, et cetera. And the hope is, you know, when it goes up, when it comes back down, it won't be as low as it was prior to it going up. Yes. Yes. So, exactly. you know, that's just how you grow your product. I mean, I don't know what they can do about Rampage. I mean, clearly it's it's just there to get people more TV time and to advance kind of secondary angles to a degree. Yeah, but it's a terrible time slot. It's terrible. just a, it's a terrible time slot. I'm not sure terrible. what they can do about that besides changing the time slot. Um, but I don't know if I don't know if uh, uh, TNT cares about that. You know, I don't know what mm-hmm. the what the rating because they're getting a bargain. Like you know, I think I saw numbers the other day that suggested, you know, they're paying a lot more for hockey, but hockey doesn't draw as much as AEW does. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a generalization. I, I just saw some basic numbers. Um, so I would imagine TNT still happy having that, you know, on Friday nights. Yeah, because uh, it's kind of destination programming. And they could they could pop ratings from time to time if they really want to, um, but uh, but yeah I don't know it's going to be interesting to see how the rampage thing works out over the the long haul I don't know indeed indeed uh, I am Mr J says I missed both shows tonight what bits are worth watching back uh, the opening of SmackDown with Brock and Sammy is an absolute delight yeah everything can't with recommend Brock. that enough everything with Brock tonight was really good I thought the uh, Sheamus Cesaro match was pretty decent that was good yeah. Sasha be uh Sasha and uh, Shayna yeah. was good. That was a good and one. And then yeah. uh the 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 opening and ending matches on Rampage were both really solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Cool. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us. Twitch chat, stick around. We'll answer some more of your questions. Hopefully, uh, a lot of you will join us tomorrow on the Twitch for our Triple A Triple Mania Reyes 2021 watch along. Yes. Thanks for watching everybody. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.